A few days ago, I came up with something that I think is very special and sentimental. I was cleaning out the front yard pond so I could catch the fish. Initially, I thought I'd be able to net them all up, but that wasn't possible. So I drained it completely, grabbed them all by hand, and set it back up. I didn't intend to go that extensive with it, but I was able to get it all cleaned up in the process for the next family to enjoy. Anyway, as I did all of that, I really got a chance to appreciate the pond for what it is. I've taken a lot of care over the years to naturalize it with plants and other elements that I think sets it apart. That said, keep in mind that it looks much stronger in the warmer months. Regardless, there's still a lot to enjoy. Some of my favorite features have always been the three-tiered waterfall, the horsetail, a chorus grass, bloody dock, and the various patches of moss that I meticulously cultivated. I doubt that someone else is going to appreciate all these details and the moss as much as me, but that's what makes it special. I'm also amazed that the impatiens are still putting off flowers this late in the season and that hydrocotyl became a perennial this far north. It probably goes without saying that I'm leaving all of this here for someone else to enjoy. However, I'm a sentimental guy, and I thought it would be cool to craft a project using materials from this pond and my property to retain the memories. That's something I really enjoy about art, and more specifically terrariums. They have the ability to capture the essence of nature, while also holding sentimental value themselves. Take this one for example. We made it at our wedding a few years ago. Every time I see it, it immediately brings me back to that day, which brings me joy. Everything you've seen in the past four years from the animal room and the ponds occurred at our first home. We shared a lot of great times there and we'll always look back on it fondly, but unfortunately it no longer served us. However, I thought it would be really cool to capture some of those memories, like we did here, inside of a terrarium. Plus, if you're sentimental like me, maybe this could inspire you to hold memories of your own within a terrarium. As you'd expect, there were a lot of really awesome things to collect, starting at the pond. This moss was a two for one, because as you can see here, it has variegated water celery growing in it. I think it would look awesome in a terrarium if it takes hold. I'm also unsure how many horsetail will fare, but I thought it was worth a try. Hydrocotyl will be an excellent addition, so I made sure to get some of that. I found some azula near the lilies as well. From there, I searched the yard and got more moss. I also collected soil, leaf litter, and stones. Over the fence is another part of my yard which, truthfully, I've only ever explored a few times. I figured now was as good of a time as ever to take a closer look, and this is when things got really interesting. Since it's fall, everything is bare right now, which revealed some incredible things. First, I found a few pieces of driftwood. I also found two moss-covered baseballs. This one is just getting started, but this one is a masterpiece. As most of you well know by now, I absolutely love moss, and it doesn't get much better than this. As I'm looking at it now, it's kind of like a ready-made wabikusa ball. Anyway, I think it's really incredible and deserves to be in a terrarium all on its own. What do you think? I also found a few bricks with moss on them, which were an added bonus. Right after picking these up was when I saw it. At first glance, it just looked like a glass bottle. However, before all of that, I bought this container with the full intention to use it for this build. Once I found this and saw that it was completely intact, that went completely out the window. Not only that, but I noticed that it's an old slice bottle. At the time, I knew Pepsi wasn't making slice anymore, but I didn't think much of it. However, upon doing more research, I discovered that these bottles were being used in or around 1986. It's crazy that I found it in this good of shape after that time, but the plot thickens. Our house was built in 1984, so assuming this was thrown over the hill just two years later means that this bottle is basically the same age as the house. I don't know about you, but I think that makes the entire thing way more special than using a container like this. Enough said though, let's get this thing cleaned off and turn it into a terrarium. I was a little bit nervous about getting the cap off because I didn't want to crack the bottle, but I was able to get it off fairly easily. 
I also didn't have to do anything crazy to get it cleaned off. I just ran it under some water and scrubbed it up a little bit, and the glass was looking pretty good. The inside also was surprisingly clean, except for a few specks. I just went in with a toothbrush and scrubbed those away. The toothbrush also came in handy when scrubbing off the lid. So just by using a little bit of water, I was able to get this thing nice and clean. Now unfortunately though, if you take a look at the outside, you'll see that the glass is a little bit etched. Now I tried some Barkeeper's Friend, a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, and even scraping this off, and nothing worked, which is pretty much to be expected. I didn't think I'd be able to get rid of it once I saw it, but there's really no way around it. And I also noticed that as I was spinning this around and cleaning it, that there's a date right here on the bottom. And I wasn't very far off from my estimation. The bottle itself is from 87, so it's pretty close. Although I collected pretty much everything I need to turn this into a terrarium, I have three additional things here that will allow me to do it even better. I need some sand to create the false bottom and to amend the soil I collected earlier, a little bit of activated carbon or charcoal to add in between the false bottom and substrate layers, and a little bit of orchid bark to also add into that soil. Like most other terrariums you've seen on the channel before, we'll start out at the false bottom. Since the container is so small, using just sand seemed like the way to go. Of course, this will create a reservoir for water that will sustain the system. Next is the carbon, which I sprinkled over top of the sand. A thin layer will do the job and help retain the optimal conditions. After adding it, I used this paintbrush to even it out. The soil I collected earlier could work as is, but I want to ensure that it remains fluffy for years to come. That's why I amended it with orchid bark and sand. I also broke up some leaves and mixed them throughout. Sphagnum moss would have been another welcomed addition, but I think this will actually work quite well as is. Anyway, I poured the substrate over top of the previous layers. The brush came in handy once more to help me distribute the layer. And as you'll see here, it sloped up slightly toward the back, and this helps me create a greater sense of depth. I just laid out all of the plants and I was right about to start adding them to this container whenever I realized that I have a serious issue. As you can see, I've got quite the selection here, but really the only thing that I've collected that's appropriate for a container of that size are the mosses. So I got to thinking and I figured instead of only setting up this terrarium, why don't I do a second one inside of the original container I've selected since it's larger, as well as a third one for that awesome baseball I found in this cloche container. I went on to add the false bottom, carbon, and substrate layers like you saw with the previous container. Now they're all ready to go. I'll begin with the cloche container, which I'll keep very simple. To pay tribute to where I found the mossy baseball, I figured that scaping this exclusively with leaves made the most sense. Plus, this ensures that the ball will be the focus of the build. As for the others, I'll need to use these tweezers to place elements. Like I alluded to earlier, the slice bottle will have to stay pretty simple. First, I stuffed a large patch of moss through the opening and reworked it to act like a background of sorts. Then I placed additional patches in front of this. I got dirt all over the opening during the process, so I had to go and clean it off. Into the third and final container went the horsetail. This will be a great background plant. I added a few stones to the midground in front of this to build up the land so things aren't quite as flat. The hydrocaudal will get much larger than it is now and will likely take up the entire terrarium, so I planted it near the back as well. I filled in the remaining spots with more moss. Like most other terrariums, it's best to add some springtails. They'll take care of any mold that could potentially show up, and adding them to a terrarium is as simple as pouring some of the water in from the cultures. Even though this added some water, I gotta put in some more. I sprayed some into the containers and onto the ball. 
I use the tweezers to clean off the glass with the cotton ball to finish things off. And that's how I made three completely different terrariums using materials that I gathered at the old place. Now they're all cool and special in their own sort of way, but if I had to choose a favorite, it would have to be this one right here. When I saw that baseball covered in moss like that, I knew it was something special and I was so excited about it. And to be able to bring it home and put it into a terrarium like this was incredible. Not only that though, I think that the bottle on this one is also really special and it's just it's cool how it all panned out, you know? I went back there not really expecting to find much other than some moss, maybe a little bit of driftwood, which on a side note, that driftwood that I got was really cool. But I didn't expect to find much, and sure enough, I found a cool piece of moss, which, as you all know, just within this hobby, moss is probably one of my favorite things to use and incorporate into builds. And then I like to collect containers and that sort of thing, so to be able to find this was really cool and I think it's just an awesome way to conclude that chapter of my life. I'll have these terrariums for years to come and to be able to have captured those memories and just create sentimental pieces, you know? There's something cool about it and I think that's why I'm drawn to terrariums so much. I love the artistry of it. I really enjoy being able to capture nature in a system like this as well but I like the memories of it too. And it's just so cool, all the different facets that they can encapsulate. And uh, it, it just reminds me why I like terrariums so much. So uh, we'll, we'll circle back around on all of this very soon. I got some really cool terrarium content coming out in hopefully the not so distant future. So stay tuned for that. If you all enjoyed this one, be sure to leave with a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more content if you haven't done so already. And as always, I'm so thankful for your continued support. Until next time, Surplus Squad, take care and peace.